And yeah, start to drink water. This will be another, this will probably be a shorter part for YouTube. Hi, YouTube. Let's see where this picks up. Let's see where this part picks up. I don't know. I'm very unsure on subsequent playthroughs of this game. Whenever I interacted with Kaine, oh, we just start here. About something from my past. Huh. Nice. Maybe my mind has been confusing her with my sister this whole time. Anyway. Kainé's dream discrimination. This is new. I know this for a fact. I'm also glad I got water because it's time to read. <clears throat> the sound of rain filled the village. The steep cliffs that surrounded the area magnified the sound, causing even the slightest drizzle to rattle like a thunderstorm. Thin wisps of smoke streamed from huts as the villagers huddled in their homes and waited out the rain. A single child, however, had braved the downpour and was now wandering slowly towards the wooden, hawk-shaped weather vane at the center of town. The wanderer reached the vane, which had existed for as long as any could remember, and stared. The child's face was simultaneously delicate and fierce, like a teacup that had survived a shipwreck. Those traits combined with pale white skin to give the face almost sexless quality. If the beak turns east, I go home. If it stays west, then I... The child blinked. Rain slowly dropped, dripped down the young one's short hair and began its long descent to the ground. Come on, come on! The child felt a slight breeze and watched as the vein slowly creaked to life. Spinning this way and that for a moment, it finally settled with its beak pointing firmly towards the east. East? Really? Before the vein can move again, a jagged rock came spinning and tumbling through the air, striking home against the child's head. The force of the blow dropped the child to the ground as a hail of stones began to fall all around. Oh no, they found me. A heartbreaking smile crept across the child's face as the stones continued their assault. Through the rain, the sound of multiple footsteps grew louder before a voice rang out. Yoo-hoo, Kaine! The voice belonged to Demo, worst of all the bullies in the area. As Kainé struggled to stand, a final stone came skittering through the mud and bounced on her foot. Blood oozed from a cut above her eye and blurred her vision, but she couldn't make out the shapes of Demo and his usual gang of idiots. The boy seemed taken aback for a moment by Kainé's seeming indifference to the blood dripping from her face, but quickly regained his bravado. What's up, freak? You like rain, like getting all wet, or did you finally decide to run away from home? Well, she knew it was futile. Kainé turned to leave. Before she could get more than a few steps, the other children scrambled to surround her, cruelty burning in their eyes. Kinda knew those were not the only eyes on her. The Tormentor's parents watched from the safety of their homes. She was attuned to the sensation. It was one she has experienced many times before. While some children, villagers simply turned a blind eye to the actions of their children, many encouraged it openly. In a society ruled by superstition and fear, Kinda was something to be hated and, if possible, destroyed. I didn't say you could leave, freak. Demo's words chewed at her like a worm through an apple. You can't hurt me, she lied to herself. Be strong, be brave, he can't hurt me, he can't hurt me, he can't hurt. Oh look, the little freak's gonna cry. What's wrong? You said that everyone hates you and wants you dead? And he prayed for the rain to flood down and carry you away from the world that seemed to have no place for her. But if they were gods, they chose to ignore her. As Demo crept ever closer, the clouds began to thin and the rain slowed. Even the weather hates me, I'm useless. A failure. Much of Demo's rocket taking my head off. Kinda couldn't meet Demo's leering gaze. She lowered her eyes and stared at the muddy ground below. The bully moved forwards until he was inches away. She could smell the scent of old meat on his breath. The boy grabbed Kinda's face with thick fingers and yanked it upwards. She tried to turn away, but he forced her gaze back and jammed his thumb against her eyelid to pry it open. 
show me. No. Did you just say no? Dino grinned evilly. You don't say no to me. No one says no to me. Not even taking his attention from Kaini. Well, those chords. Come on, guys. Let's give the freak what she deserves. As soon as Demo finished, kicks and blows began to rain down upon Kaine. Demo paused, still grinning as Kaine curled into a bowl and tried to make the pain stop. I don't get you, freak. What you acting like a girl for? Huh? Everyone knows what you really are. Kaine ignored the question, choosing instead to stare at the weather vane and continued to point east as if supremely confident about the future it had chosen for her. Go home? Yeah, that's a funny joke for some dead parents and no home to go to. Freak, chanted the children. Freak, freak, freak. Kinda closed her eyes and listened to the rain, waiting for the pain to start again. As the clutching hands of the village children closed around her, she bent her mind to the sound of the rain, letting it become her entire world. The rain fell, but the pain never came. Only when the laughter of her torment has turned to terrified cries did she dare open a single blood-caked eye. Kanye was shocked to see Demo sprawled on the ground, holding his head and screaming in pain. She could see the blood welling from spaces between his fat, twisted fingers. Oh my god, he's crying. He's actually crying. Deprived of their lady, the other children glanced back and forth between themselves, as if waiting for someone to step forward and take charge. When no savior emerged, they began an easy, uneasy shuffle away from Kaine. But the young girl was the least of their concerns. Instead, their attention was wrapped on the ancient woman standing a few feet away. After struggling for breath for a moment, she finally spoke in a thick voice. Voice thick with rage. Hurt like a bitch, don't it? I suggest you scatter before I throw another one. If any little bastards ever touch my kiny again, I'll do far worse than throw a rock. You can count on it. The old woman crouched down and gently touched the hand Demo was using to cover the wound. Before he could think to protest, she ground her palm into the wound and twisted back and forth. Ah! He screamed, leaping to his feet. Stop it! What are you doing? Quit whining. Ain't no one ever died from a scratch. Give me another rock, you stupid bitch! A big one! That thing could have killed me! The old woman shrugged. That's the best cure for stupid. I like this old lady, just... Just throwing that out there. Totally unrelated to the story that's happening. Also, I thought I was done with reading after that first Forest of Myth section. Whew! So much reading! Demo's face twisted with rage at her words, look, locking his eyes on Kaina. He took a step backwards and spat on the ground. Get out! Leave this village! No one wants you here, either of you! Seeing the old woman grab another stone, Demo's companions turned tail and ran. As they fled, the old woman gathered, grabbed her side and barked out a single laugh. Ha! <laughs> look at the fat boy go! Guess he's healthy enough to run from a fight. The woman's smile faded as she turned her attention to Kaine. Kneeling down, she removed her shawl and placed it around the young girl's shoulders. And produced a cloth from the folds of her dress and began blotting at the blood on her forehead. Oh, Kaine, why didn't you fight back? You're stronger than that lot. The words of her grandmother stung Kaine, and she turned away. Don't be nice to me. I don't deserve it. Nothing, nothing matters anymore. Her tears, held in check for so long, finally began to fall on the muddy ground below. No one hates me. They think I cause bad things to happen. They think I'm a freak. I wish I was dead. Kaine's tears turned to sobs. She felt her grandmother's hand on her shoulders. Despite her advanced age and diminutive size, she was a woman of surprising strength. Kaine found herself unable to turn away. Don't talk like that, girl. It's forever wide and deep that flows between the realms of this world and the next. It grants no mercy to any that attempt the crossing. You had a duty to fight until your last breath, understand? The old woman tightened her grip and tried to still the tremor in her voice. You know the pain of losing someone close to you, Kaine. You know, because you survived it. As the words hit home, Kaine was struck by the force of her love for the old woman. As a young child, she didn't even know of her grandmother, but when her parents died, the woman quickly accepted her as her own. Grandma, as Kaine called her, was cunning, vulgar, and quick to violence. The first few years together had not been easy, but with each year that had passed, Kaine and her grandmother had gone closer. However, it was only now sitting in mud with tears and blood kicking her face that Kaine truly understand the depths of her affection. He was a woman who had seen hard times, who had seen death, who had fought through all those things, and somehow emerged on the other side. If anyone can understand Kaine's pain and loneliness, it was her. Do I make you sick, Grandma? Of course not. Don't be an ass. Kaine drew her grandmother's moth-eaten shawl around her body and shuddered. Well, my body, it's not normal. If I was normal, then Mom and Dad wouldn't... Hush, interrupted Grandma. I'll hear another word of this nonsense. You're my granddaughter, and I love you, and if folks have a problem with that, they can just go to hell. That, the old woman reached out and placed a wreath of dried flowers in Kaine's hair. 
Skittle took to bend the flowers without breaking. The stems or losing a single petal was remarkable. And the beauty of it made Candy want to cry all over again. Oh my gosh, these are Lunar Tears! Grandpa, you made this for me? Lunar Tears were legendary flowers. Most people could live their entire lives without ever seeing one. Her grandmother had somehow collected a dozen or more. She reached up and touched the wreath as if she couldn't believe it was real. Where did you find these? Yes, I'm a lot of was out doing the shopping. The woman turned away as she spoke. She didn't kind of suspect that the search had been more difficult than she was letting on. The pain she took to construct the ornament, let alone track down the flowers using its construction, made Kaini's heart hurt. She reached up and gently adjusted the wreath, admiring the way it felt between her fingers. Didn't quite turn out right. The old hands have trouble with delicate worth, but it sure looks good on a pretty girl like you. And he blushed and turned away. You think I'm pretty? Of course you are. What a fool thing to say. Thank you, Grandma. Her grandmother smiled. It's gonna be fine, you and me. As long as we got each other, we'll be just fine. And I took her grandmother's hand in hers, and the two of them struggled with their feet. They began the long walk home. Candy gripped the hand with all her might, as if trying to stop smoke from drifting away on the wind. Rain had stopped. And he stood beneath the weather vane, watching it spin in lazy circles, no longer caring about the direction it faced when it stopped. I don't need to escape. I have a home now. Grandma loves me, and that's enough, even if it's us against the world. She let her gaze drift up past the vein into the cloudy sky. The last hints of a rainbow was slowly fading. She turned and headed for home. The light scattered into a million particles and vanished, seemingly taken away on the breeze. Kanye's dreams daily life. More reading. My word. Give me a second, chat. Don't get me wrong, I love this style of storytelling, but man, is it a lot of reading. Uh, definitely works better if you're playing the game by yourself and not trying to stream it. I tell you, whole oh, what? And well, I, I get committed to voice acting out stuff. In the distance, Kanye heard the steady sounds of an axe striking wood. The noise had a purposeful quality to it, as if she was hearing a master woodsman go about his work. My wood being produced, however, was far from a work of art as it could be. Pieces of every shape and size were being flung about with wild abandon. Anyone trying to stack such wood would probably die of frustration before the job was through. Stupid piece of shit axe! Kanye's grandmother flailed away with the axe, filling the air with both splinters of wood and words that would make the most hardened sailor blush. Grandma! That you, Kaine? Yelled the old woman, taking her eyes off the wood for a moment. Don't t too close, or I might take your goddamn foot off by mistake. Brought the axe down on a piece of wood, sending chips flying in every direction. One spun past Kaine close enough for her to hear the whistle, at which point she decided to step back. Once she scuttled to a safe distance, she cupped her hands around her mouth and shouted, Grandma, do you need help? Can I get you water or lunch or a new axe? The axe, poised to strike another wobbly blow, paused in midair. The old woman considered her granddaughter's offer for a moment and then smiled. Tell you what, since I'm doing such a piss poor job of chopping, why don't you come over here and take over so I can get water? Trades have been restless lately, and I don't want you running into one of them bastards. Relinquishing the axe, the grandma picked up her pole with wooden buckets on either end, gathering water. It's by far the more difficult of the two jobs, but Kanye knew better than to complain. Once grandma's mind was set, there was no change in it. Kanye did her best to help with chores, but grandma took every task that required to travel to the village. Unless she had a long list of plausible excuses, Kanye knew the real answer. She didn't want her granddaughter to be taunted and harassed. Once she had moved in, grandma decided to take her residence a good distance from the area. Out of sight, out of mind seemed to be the best policy when it came to villagers and her granddaughter, and rare were the days when any but the two of them would be found on the rocky acre of land they called home. She enjoyed the solitude, but it harbored a secret resentment that her grandmother was forced to spend her golden years in such a place. After watching her grandma leave, she turned her attention to the task at hand. She never chopped wood in her life and soon discovered why the old woman hated the chore. Swing after swing only produced a tiny crack in the wood, and she finally managed to connect the solid stroke the tool embedded itself in the log and refused to budge. <laughs> Frustrated, Kanye swung the axe around her head and threw it, log and all, across the yard. Damn it! Damn it! Crap! She suddenly understood the joy her grandmother felt in a good curse. Happier now, she picked up the axe, forced it into the wood, and resumed chopping. She had a natural skill with a blade, but the task was challenging, but she soon began to form her small pink hands. This is tough, my logs are all weird sizes. 
Spitting on her palms and ignoring the pain, she redoubled her efforts just as she was developing a rhythm. Grandma returned from the village, settling down setting down her buckets of the small size. She took one look at the logs and coughed out a wheezy laugh. Pretty clumsy do girl, you better practice if if you her grandmother suddenly collapsed to her knees, causing one of the buckets to wobble precariously. Eyes wide, Kenny dropped the ass axe and ran to her grandmother's side. Grandma! The old woman shook her head and pointed a trembling finger at the bucket. Get the bucket. Can't let it spill. <sighs> so much reading. I'm too stubborn to not. Kenny steadied the bucket with her foot as she knelt by her grandma. A small bit of water sloshed over the side and made a new home in the hem of her dress, but Kenny didn't notice. Grandma, what's happening? Raised with panic, she grabbed her grandmother's by the shoulders and shook. After a moment, the woman lifted her arms and batted her away. Just stop that. Just stop. It ain't like I'm dying. Just tired from the trip is all. She desperately wanted to believe her, but one look at the old woman's shaking hands and worn face told her more than words ever could. Her grandma had lived a long, hard life, and it seemed the bill was finally coming due. The time when her grandmother watched over Kainé was ending. Sooner than either of them had feared, the positions would be reversed. Next morning, Kainé came to the side of her grandmother's bed and took her wrinkled hand. Grandma, you're sick, and you need medicine. I'm going to the village. The old woman shook her head and tried to rise, but Kainé gently pushed her down. It's alright. It'll be fine. Grandmother fixed her with a gaze that could melt steel. After what seemed like an eternity, she finally lowered her eyes and sighed. I don't like it, goddammit. But I guess I should quit being so stubborn and let you grow up. The old woman watched as Kainé strapped on her boots and made her way down the road to the village. Hours later, as an unseen sun made its way across a dark and rainy sky, she was still watching. Kainé moved at a brisk pace, checking her pockets every few minutes to make sure the money her grandmother gave her was still there. Every noise caused her to spin on her heels, making sure she wasn't being stalked by a shade or worse, Timo and his gang. But she encountered neither tormentors nor shades. Kainé finally found herself at the entrance to the village. A few adults she could see glance sideways and muttered to each other, and raised hands before slinking away into the shadows. Heard racing, Kainé took a series of rapid, shallow breaths and tried to calm herself. To prove myself, I have to help Grandma. I have to be strong. She handed those words to herself over and over and over again as she slowly made her way. Finally, her eyes settled on a round, rotund older woman who was angrily waving her arms in the air and telling anyone who would listen exactly what she thought of Kainé's presence. Hey, lady, said Kainé with a bravado she didn't feel. Where's the apothecary? The woman's flabby cheeks shook in bewildered anger. How dare this thing speak to me, they seemed to say. But Kainé saw that her eyes held a different emotion. Fear. They are both scared, lady. Trust me on this one. Which way? Kainé repeated. One pointed a small building to her right before hitching her dress up and stumbling off in the other direction. Kainé cringed, expecting a stone to come flying from the crowd, but none came. Her mind was filled with a sense of pride as she made her way to the apothecary, but the new emotion had little time to take root for as soon as she opened the door she noticed a familiar customer at the counter. It was Demo. He'd clearly been sent here on some kind of family errand because his gang of followers were nowhere to be found. Oh my god, did I mean, what are you doing here, freak? And so it was delivered without fours and kind of happy, happily ignored it. She's stretching on tiptoes to see over the counter. She asked the shopkeeper for the medication. Ha, <laughs> that little bitch finally keel over. Go to hell, Demo. The boy's eyes grew so wide they seemed ready to fall out of his head before he could let fly a comeback or worse, a punch. The apothecary told him to knock it off before he kicked them out of the store. He must slunk out, cursing Kainé under his breath. Once she was gone, once he was gone, she allowed herself to breathe once more, taking a brief tour while the owner prepared her medication. Countless tiny bottles filled the cramped store with a label written in some indecipherable language. The notion of her own was assaulted her nose, was creating a scent that was exotic but not altogether unpleasant. Seeing such a variety in supplies gave Kainé a sense of peace. Surely, in a world so vast, there would be a place that she could call home. On the far wall behind the counter rested a portrait of a stunning young girl. Picture had once contained bright, vibrant colors, but time had worked its cruel magic, and they were beginning to fade. The beauty, however, was undiminished. Like that picture? And I turned to find the apothecary with a small vial of medicine in his hand. His eyes were gentle but sad, and they seemed to stare through her and into nothing as he spoke. That's my daughter. I sketched it when she was just a little girl. She's been dead for a long time now. Kanye didn't know how to respond. She just stared at the portrait and tried to come up with the right words. Pictures are wonderful things, continued the shopkeeper. Let the ones closest to you live on forever. 
He shook his head slightly, then looked down upon Kaine and smiled. He handed her the medicine, he reached into a sizable green amp, apron, and produced a handful of old wax crayons. You should have these. There's no one left that I wish to draw. Kaine took an instinctive step back, causing the shopkeeper's face to darken. Yes, I've heard the rumors about you. It's a small village and words travel quickly, but between you and me, I'm not sure which of them to believe, but I also think they don't matter much. Now your grandmother, Kali, and I think the way she was driven out of this town is just deplorable. Grandma's name is Kali, thought Kaine suddenly. She was still mulling this new fact over in her mind as she reached out and gently took the crowns in the apothecary's hands. Your mother's an old friend of mine, and I owe her much. Why does she would like it if you drew a picture of her? I think she'd like that very much. And I muttered a quick agreement, but inside her heart was bursting. Never before had a villager treated with anything but complete contempt. It was a tiny, almost imperceptible step. But it was a step nonetheless, and with enough tiny steps, she might one day discover the rest of the world. When Kanye returned home, she found her grandmother asleep in bed. Her feet were blackened and raw, even bleeding. And didn't kind of think she had been pacing around the room until exhaustion finally caught up with her. She placed the medicine by her grandmother's pillow and turned to leave, but found the old woman's hand clasped around her arm. Back already, are you? Come here, let me have a look at you. Grandma sat up and examined her from head to toe. Finally satisfied that nothing terrible had befallen her grandchild, she leaned back and allowed herself to relax. Well, how was it? Those bastards give you any trouble? It was kind of fun, said Kaine with a small smile. Well, seriously, it was. Fun, eh? Asked her grandmother in a voice which implied she believed anything, but... Uh-huh. So anytime you need me to run an errand, just let me know. As she spoke, Kaine removed the crayons from her pocket. After a brief explanation, she informed her grandmother that she was going to sketch her portrait. Portrait of me? Ridiculous. Once scared at a wrinkled old crone. The grandma will make you live forever. Horse shit. <sighs> Living forever would just piss me off. Now put those crayons away and help me with dinner. But Kenny would not relent, and in the end, grandma found herself leaning against the wall of their house as if posing for a master artist. And I took up the crayons, eyed her subject carefully, and set to work. Just as her grandma was about to nod off, she finished the piece. Just staring at it for a bit, she released it from her grip and slowly let it drift to the floor. That's terrible. It doesn't look like you at all. I'm sorry, Grandma. I thought these crayons would, you know, make drawing easy or something. The old woman's eyes narrowed at her granddaughter's disappointment. Let me be the judge of that, she said, ignoring the pain in her back and reaching for the paper. The sketch could have been a person's face. It could have also been a boulder, a lump of clay, or an incredibly misshapen loaf of bread. All have ended in a chaotic array of colors. The old woman stared at the picture for a long time and slowly wheezed out a laugh. Oh, Kaine, you truly are my blood. You're as clumsy as me and I love it. But hush, I won't hear any more bull about how ugly you think it is. Came from the heart and I'll treasure it always. True to her word, the old woman gave the picture a place of honor above the kitchen table. In the days that followed, she would often catch her staring at the portrait. A strange smile on her face, an action she interpreted as silent mocking laughter. A week later, Kaine could stay there no more and asked her grandma to take the artwork down. Posh. I'll take this thing down while they roll me in my shroud. On to this for a bit, then turned to Kaine and dropped to one knee. Listen to me, girl. Seeing this picture makes me happy in a way I've never felt before. It makes you want to go on so that someday you can feel the same happiness. A moment that burned itself in Kaine's memory. A perfect blend of pride and love and joy that came together to form a lifelong remembrance. She swore to never forget this moment, to never forget the old woman who made her place in this world possible. Time moves on, people and memories move in and out, life like passing ghosts through a hall. Nope, I read that wrong. <clears throat> Take two. Time moves on, people and memories move in and out of life like ghosts passing through a hall. This moment will be different, because I will remember it forever. Forever. <gasps> that was another one. Give me a second, chat. <laughs> so much reading. Um, just, just give me a second. Give me a minute. Catch my breath. Not literally, but metaphorically. There's going to be a lot more to read.
Listen, this is the third part I've had to read out. I wonder how many parts there are. I'm curious. I'm looking it up. I'm cheating. Are these called Kainé's Memories? I think. Kainé's Dreams, my bad. It's four, my goodness. There's four! Four books of reading. Look, we're going to skim this one a little bit. Crackling firewood. Listen, listen. Just read faster. Crackling firewood, pushing around a wooden disc. Give the object a brief sniff. You want me to eat a bug? It's no bug, it's a berry. Why would I be feeding you bugs? Sure it looks like a bug and I think it's burnt. Do the berry in her mouth, chewing as little as possible. Oh, yeah, that's terrible, all right. You're not spending too much time with me. Look at the sass. Five years had passed since when her grandma had saved her from the bullies. Listen, if you rewatch this back on YouTube chat and you wanna and you wanna read through this yourself, you can hit the pause button. I tell you what, or you can rewatch the vod and hit the pause button. But I, I don't think I can read out two more sets of these. <laughs> My voice will give out. At least not all the way. She could not remember a time when she had been happier. More daily responsibilities. Grandma grew weaker. And kind of... <laughs> The breakfast of a burned berry. The old woman rarely asks for specifics anymore. Check out the Kelma trees. See if they're ripe. Can make a jam. Gotta pick up some flagstones. Constructed cloth, rope, and rubble. The old place sacked like a boxer in the final round. <laughs> a dying cat could chew through this house. I'm gonna build a stone wall. Bunch of thieves want to ransack this place. Let them come. We got nothing worth stealing. Worried about thieves? Worried about Shays? Someone west of the village. Don't have to worry about it today. Don't have to worry about it. If I don't get to the Kelma trees, we won't eat. Oh, the grandma's losing her mind a little bit. Losing her. That's sad. Oh, so the flowers haven't faded with time, huh? There's less chatter about shades and defensive walls and more talk about how beautiful you've become. She's gonna remove it, but her grandmother's face stopped her. You're a beautiful thing and there ain't another like you in the world, and I'm very proud of you. Okay, Grandma, that's enough goddamn compliments for one day. Such a mouth on you. Where'd you get that from? Gee, I wonder. I'll teach you to sass me, girl. Or she wasn't grabbed kindly by the ears, pulling her around the room with a crazed grin. Grandma, Grandma, stop! What the hell? The woman stared at her and blinked and slowly held her wrinkled little hands out as if it was the first time she'd ever seen them. Oh, I don't know what happened there. I'm sorry, girl. Sometimes my mind just... Kainé thought the look on her grandmother's face was the most heartbreaking thing she'd ever seen. Listen, maybe I should stay home after all. I won't help. You stay here to keep an eye on an old codger like me. You go get your fruit in your wall and whatnot. I'll be fine. When we come back, I'll have a nice grasshopper dinner waiting for you. Trying desperately to ignore the worry that was gnawing at the walls of her heart. She could feel the old woman's wise watching her. Don't turn around, don't turn around, don't turn around. 
spun around. She saw a small bent woman standing in front of a ramshackle with a sad expression on her face. God, she looks so old. It's like the wind could reach down and just carry her away. The little fruit she could collect was tossed carelessly and she only found a couple of stones. Cursing herself with the last of focus, pushed the nearly empty wheelbarrow back. She crested the final hill, suddenly froze in place. Wheelbarrow fell down from her fingers and collapsed on its side, sending a few pieces of wrinkled brown fruit rolling back down the hill. Her gaze was transfixed by the thick black cloud that hovered just ahead, tracing its path with a finger kind of suddenly felt her stomach and tying a knot in it on itself. Gods, no. From this house was ablaze, the flames licking up as if trying to touch the sky itself. Grandma? Grandma? Kaine ran then faster than she'd ever moved in her life. Once she tripped on a stone and was sprawling to the rocky ground, she left on her feet and continued running, unmindful of the blood that spilled from her wounded hands and knees. She got closer. Kaine's mind began to race in time with her footfalls. It's too dark. It's too dark. Not just fire. Can't be fire. Too much smoke. Gotta save her. Gotta save her. She burst into her front yard and came to a sudden halt. Her worst suspicions confirmed. The smoke from the fire was mingling with a thick, inky blackness of an enormous shade. The massive creature supported itself on three twisted feet, achieved balance through means of a large, armored tail. Scales, horns, and claws sprouted from its body in a random, chaotic pattern, giving it the appearance of a lizard designed by some insane god. Seeing Kaine let out a roar and flicked its tail, sending small whirlwinds spinning around the earth. Her mind was unable to comprehend such a thing. The smell hit her. The creature bellowed. Kanye responded with a scream of her own. Alright, you bastards, you or me, let's go. Urging her to look at the destruction, it's so gleefully wrought. Smoke and flame, she spotted a small figure struggling to escape. She's alive! She sprang to life and raced across the yard. Before she, before she could advance more than a few steps, the shade opened its mouth and let out a roar powerful enough to uproot trees and send them flying. Blasted her through the air, smashing her against the rocky earth. The stars danced in front of her eyes as she tried to remember how her legs worked. Get up! Get up! Get up! Get up! Get up! Get up! Now! She struggled to her feet. The shade stomped towards the house and pinned her grandmother to the ground with the tip of its claw. The old woman struggled to move the claw from her stomach, but she might as well have been moving a mountain. She coughed briefly, sending a spray of blood into the air, and then collapsed to the ground, her energy spent. Many lurched to her feet, only to fall back to the earth with gasp. Her ankles were on fire, one or both of them were surely broken. Knowing the pain, she began dragging herself across the ground, leaving a drunken trail of blood and dust in her wake. Grandmother's face was turning blue, her eyes rolling back until only the whites exposed. Kindly pulled herself across the ground with maddening slowness, the distance seeming to increase with every second. The shade glanced between the two, flicked out its tongue, its giant mouth turning up at the corners, foot panting breaths belts from somewhere deep inside its core. Bastard laughing at us. You have no idea how such a mindless creature could experience emotion, but there can be no doubt the shade was taking joy in their suffering. The shade moved its claw slightly, allowing Grandma to breathe again. It was clearly keeping her alive, only to snuff out her life when Kenny was close enough. Well, she broke her feet. And I don't know if I can read that out loud without wanting to throw up. Uh, but she jumped on its back with a knife, and she's screaming, Give her back to me. But it was like stabbing a rock, and after a few swipes, the knife broke at the hilt with a dull snap. The shade panted with laughter again, then raised its tail and sent it rushing through the air towards the young girl who was latched onto its foot. And I never stood a chance. The tail struck her square in the chest and sent her crashing into the burning wreckage of her home. She lay on the ground with blood pouring from multiple wounds, a small weak voice spoke up. Kaine? 
Kind of his vision blurred, but forced herself to focus on the sound. Her eyes cleared enough for her to make out her grandmother's hands reaching through the smoke. Gotta run. You can't best this one. And he grabbed the hands and held on with all her strength. Grandma, come on, we have to go. The old woman coughed loudly. One of her hands slick with blood slipped from Kaine's grasp and thumped to the ground below. I said, run, goddammit. You have to live. You have to get through. Thought would stay forever unfinished. Before she could say another word, the shade's clawed foot descended, smashing through the remains of the roof and down upon the shattered figure of the old woman. Blood oozed from the gaps in the creature's toes as the terrible putrid smell assaulted Kaine's nose once again. She stared at the foot, dumbfounded, convinced that what she saw couldn't possibly be real. When the creature lifted its appendage, all that remained was a twisted, unrecognizable mass of rubble and red. Her grandmother was gone. Kane blinked, trying to feel the hands which had just been in hers a moment before for a fleeting instant. She could remember the warmth of that embrace, the trembling of the fingers. And the sensation drifted away on the breeze and was gone. Memories flashed through Kaine's mind until they became a meaningless jangle of noise. Kaine screamed, a thunderous sound that echoed off the cliffs and seemed to roll away forever. Shade eased forwards, black ichor pouring from its mouth and dissolving into smoke on the ground below. The earth shook with every step. Kaine's body slowly rose as if controlled by a mad puppet master. Her arms and legs were bent at impossible angles. Her head lolled dangerously to the side, yet she somehow managed to stand. Staring at the shade, her eyes began to glow with a deep red fire. The creature, so confident just moments before, took a slow, hesitant step backwards, trying to discern if this broken human could possibly pose a threat. Kaine seized the moment, laughing like a mad woman. She leapt into the air and plunged the shattered hilt of her knife deep within the leg of the shade. The shade shook her off like a fly, sending her crashing to the earth. Her chest rose and fell slowly as if a great weight were, res were resting on it. Sounds of pain echoed through her mind, something warm and thick oozed from her ears. Is that blood? I think it is. I think I'm bleeding to death. Can't die, Grandma told me to live. Deep inside Kanye's mind, something finally broke. Everything faded away until there was a single incantation, repeated over and over. Kill it. The spark that was Kanye's slowly began to flicker and die. She felt her desire to kill and her desire to live blend into one. Distance between heartbeats grew longer and longer. Uh, that was a lot of reading. The beast approaches. Oh, I know. Oh, that was a lot of reading. I'm not used to reading that much out loud, chat. That was like 20 minutes of reading, I'm pretty sure. That was incredible. I loved the writing. I loved the way they told that story, but that was a lot of reading. So forgive me if I'm a little quieter for a bit. Okay, it does keep all my items from exactly when the last part ended. Anger this creature must have. How does it even survive these past five years? I'm not gonna let this happen again. It dies today. I saw it. It's lighter. It's not the blade, but the skill of the user. Strike it down. Easy. I don't know when or how they're going to introduce the new stuff, so I'm kind of hesitant to cutscene skip, you know?
Oh, well, here we go. One more. Gently, weakly, softly, the shade sure that its tormentor was dead turned and stomped off towards the horizon. Stomping along the way to Bellar, one final roar. Couldn't kill it. Shamed beyond imagining, Kanye tried to turn her head to the side. But only succeeding in coughing up a huge gout of blood. It was getting difficult to see, and only after a moment of fierce concentration did she realize her left eye was gone. Laughing to herself, she turned her remaining eye to the ruins of her home and noticed a ragged stump of an arm resting a few feet away. Yeah, that's mine. It's gonna make clapping a real bitch. Ha! cried a voice, sudden from the depths of her mind. Finally gonna die, are you? Well, you had it coming. What the hell, Dima? How the hell before I pluck out your eyes and feed them to a dog? Voice of her childhood terror evaporated into smoke and would be replaced by another more recent voice. Hold still. I want to draw you. That way you can live forever. No, stop. Don't want to live forever. I want to die right here. I see. Well, if that's what you want. Shopkeeper fluttered in and out of existence, produced a piece of paper, and sketched it quickly. After a few seconds, he turned to the page and smiled. Since he rejected my offer, I decided to draw someone else. It was a picture of her grandma. Real as life. Kanye opened her mouth to thank the man, but stopped as the picture began to blacken. Before she could say anything, dozens of multi-legged insects began to swarm across the image, tearing at it with snapping pincers. No, sharpened pincers. Whoops! I can't read. Don't hurt the picture! Kanye reached out with her remaining arm, waved futilely at the air. To her surprise, the insects fell off the, insects fell off the picture into the ground below, where they vanished with tiny black tendrils of smoke. Relieved, Kanye turned her good arm back to the picture, only to let her mouth open in a silent scream. Sketch now showed her grandma as she truly was, an unrecognizable lump of nothing. The apothecary smiled and broke into a jolly dance. See that? It's perfect now. She looks just like you. I look like that? Oh god, I'm gonna die. Gonna die. Frowning in despair, Connie laid her head back in the mud and smoke of her ruined house and waited for the end to come, but just before she'd let everything go, an unfamiliar voice began whispering. Ain't you got a wish, sunshine? The voice was vulgar and fierce at the same time, as if insanity had somehow found a way to take form. Kinda wanted to scream as the voice crawled under her skin, but her lungs refused to work. You know a wish, like a prayer or something? Why don't you get on your knees and start praying to heaven? Please, invisible man in the sky, save me, save me! <laughs> Finally, Kanye resorted to shouting at the voice with her mind. I don't make wishes, they don't come true for me. I'm a curse, a freak, I should be left to die. The voice boomed in her ears. <laughs> oh my god, you are the best! And I glanced down and saw the black, shiny substance oozing from her legs. She tried to brush it away, but her remaining arm would no longer respond. The substance slowly crept around her feet and began moving up towards the rest of her body. This... death? Is this what it's like? Or is my mind just losing itself? She could feel the slime oozing upwards, feel the hot, searing pain it left in its wake. Whatever else might be happening, she was alive and this was real. Come on, let it go. Kind of tried to ignore the voice. Concentrate on the pain, but the newcomer would have none of it. Don't ignore me, sunshine. You're ready to give up, ready to die, so not let me have it. Have what? Your body. Come on, give it to me, give it to me. I want to stand on the ground, feel the rain, taste the wind. The voice paused as if licking its lip when it resumed. It was filled with mad, unabated joy. I'll take your hands and use them to choke the goddamn life out of people. I want to tear out their throats and pee them the blood just like before. In response, Kanye shifted her head and vomited. The warmth of it crept down her front and mingled with the pain of the encroaching black ooze. Are you a shade? <laughs> yeah, maybe. What of it? Slime reached her face, crept up past her nose, and slowly oozed into the socket of her missing eye. The moment it touched her brain, Kanye was struck by the most powerful sensation she'd ever felt in her life. It was ecstasy. She wanted to scream with delight, but all she could manage was a small whispered moan. Feels good, don't it? Asked the voice with a chuckle. Yeah, what can I say? I know how to please the ladies. Now give me that body. Come on, give me the body and I'll give you more of this feeling. It's a fair trade. Black lump began to protrude from Kanye's side as she watched it grew longer and thicker and eventually taking the form of her missing arm. See better, my eye must be growing back too. 
Slime reached up to envelop the rest of her face before she managed to brush it away. Stop, she whispered, marveling at how she had regained her voice. Stop. Blackus hesitated as if considering this request, then quickly shrimp down her body before disappearing in a cloud of smoke. Ah, what the hell, sunshine? We had a deal. I thought you wanted to die. Grandma said, can't die yet. A brief image of her grandmother, bloodied and broken, flashed before her eyes. She saw the shade that had killed her and heard its mocking laughter, then closed her eyes and forced the image from her mind. Her old body was quaking with rage. When she opened her eyes again, they burned bright red. The thing took my grandmother. I have to kill it before I die. Kinda glanced down and saw a mysterious pattern. The pattern of the shades burned itself into her left arm. I'll be damned, said the voice cheerfully. Look at that, sunshine. I think you and me are going to be good friends now. Kind of stared intently at her arm. The more emotional she felt, the more the letters seemed ready to puncture her skin and begin infecting the rest of her body. The arm clearly had a will of its own now. Gotta stop. Holding her left arm in her right, kind of took a deep breath and tried to calm herself. Come on, don't fight it. It's my favorite dish and I'm hungry. Let it go. Feel the anger burn with a fire of revenge. There's for blood. Then go out there and shut up. Shut up and get the hell out of my body. Your body? Oh, that's rich, sunshine. Real rich. Look, why don't you just up and die so I can have this body all to myself? What do you say? With those buddies' ears in the air, I'd love to see you dead. Kind of grabbed a nearby shard of glass and tried to saw off the shade infected portion of her side. While she could, her darkened left arm grabbed her right wrist, crushing it. Kind of screamed and dropped the shard as the sound of bone crunching on bone filled the air. <laughs> Stupid idiot girl. You're possessed now, sunshine. There ain't no going back. The voice laughed again, a loud, long wail that seemed to go on without end. Possessed? whispered Kaine. You have possessed. You and me, we got what you might call a timeshare arrangement. Remember how folks used to think you were a freak? Well, wait till they get a load of you now. And he looked up, tears in her eyes. The sky seemed smaller somehow, darker. Just because of that shade? Is this how they see the world? So, uh, listen. I know this whole possession thing seems a bit sudden, but it ain't all bad. There's plenty in it for you, too. A very powerful creature, Sunshine. And now that power belongs to you. You got enemies? People you want to kill? I can make it happen. That little fat kid who kept picking on you? The little shade that squashed your granny? will wrap them up in their own assholes. No more abuse for you, Sunshine. No more pain. Wait. You're a shade. Why would you help me kill another shade? You think I'm just kind of racist? I'm killing snob? I don't give a good goddamn where you murder honey pants. I just want to drink from the well. Kinda considered this as she struggled through her feet, the power of the shade coursing through her. The smoke from her house was drifting away with the wind, and she enjoyed the way the cool evening breeze felt in her new left arm. After a long pause, the voice spoke up again. So, uh, how about it? You and me? We'll have some good times together. Look, I'll even take care of the bloody part if you don't want. Fuck off, asshole. Muttered Kane. I'll handle the killing. <laughs> oh, look at you go, sunshine. We're gonna have so much fun. So listen, my name's Tyrion, and if you ever need me, I'll just be hanging out in this piece of meat you call a heart. Now get to it. The more you kill, the more your heart turns rotten and sour, and I like rotten and sour. And he found herself nodding at the voice. Yeah, yeah I think this can work. I'm gonna find that shit and I'm gonna strangle it with its own guts, and when I'm done, I'm gonna do the same to you, Tyrion. Count on it. <laughs> I've shit bigger than you, so good luck with that. Oh, and hey, one more thing. Right now, you and me sharing this body? But if you ever run out of hate, if you ever, you know, go soft, then I'm going to take over everything. So keep on killing, sunshine. Watch your back. The voice grew fainter and gradually faded away, fading somewhere deep inside Kainé herself. Kainé waited until she was sure the voice was gone, then waved the new left arms around a few times. It feels perfectly normal. It feels like mine. Desperately, she began poking and prodding at the new limb, determined to find something wrong with it. She didn't want it to feel normal. I mean, the creature inside her had already won. I am not a shade. I am Kaine. Repeating this mantra in her mind, she slowly began digging through the rubble of her house, being careful to ignore a certain red stained spot in the corner. Finally, after what seemed like an eternity of heartbreaking work, she found what she'd been looking for. It was the wreath of lunar tears. It would have been through hell and back, the garland's petals were as bright as ever. Kaine started to place it in her hair, then slowly lowered the wreath and stared at it. I'm sorry, Grandma. I'm so sorry. But I don't deserve to wear this anymore. I'm possessed. Corrupted. A freak. And this time I don't think there's any going back. 
Holding the flowers to her heart, Kenny fell to the ground and sobbed. As night gradually lightened to dawn, the people of the area rose to their daily lives. She remained in that position as if tears could somehow wash away all the horror that now infected her world. So that's how Kaine became Kaine. As we know her. And that's the story of how the shade got inside her and made a deal, so to speak. So that's why her left side is what it is. And that's why she keeps them wrapped. Because it looks like a shade. That's one of the reasons why she understands Emil so well. Emil, you were the one calling me, weren't you? And understands how Emil feels. Recognize me? Of course. I knew you right away. Thank you, Kaine. Welcome back, Kaine. That was so much reading, Chad. Oh my god. Wow. Well, you grew up. So, how long has it been? Five years. And that's part of the reason why Kainé feels so weird. That's a long time. Any luck with Yona? We are still no closer to finding her. We need a way to locate the Shadow Lord. By the way, this is for you. Is that a lunar tear? It's not as good as your grandmother's, but I tried. No, it's great. Thank you. I swear if I have to read more. Kylie waking from her long night okay. by sleep. Emil's unflagging kindness. Our reunion was a happy one, and we let it wash over us like rain. That is, until Devola and Popola had to go and ruin it all. Are you kidding me? You can't be serious! Please, try to understand. People are tired and scared, and... This is crap, and you know it. It's okay. We can sleep out... I'm gonna go a little fast because we've already seen this. People are afraid of... As long as you're... Right, Kaine? I'm used to sleep, but... We'll see you later. Sorry about... Like I said, we're gonna, we can go kind of fast through some of these sites. Some of these things we've already seen. Make the playthroughs faster. What is the map? Kaine always sleep. Never even... We should... We can go just faster through all these little bits along the side. I didn't get much sleep that night. For the first time in my life, I hated Devil. Oh, don't worry, it's gonna get worse. For the first time in my life, I doubted Popola. Don't worry, it's gonna get worse. But those feelings are pointless in the end. They said and did what they did for the sake of the village. To protect it from the horror of the Shades. <laughs> really, how can I blame Devola and Popola? In the end, I'm just as bad. Because I never once stopped to think about Kaine and Emil's situation myself. I should apologize to Kaine and Emil. But what good would that even do? I got a fire going, Kaine. Wait. Is that Is this new? This seems new. I don't recognize that. I'm so happy to get to talk to you again, Kaine. This is new. This wasn't in the first playthrough. Yeah. Me too. I 
tried everything I could think of to save you, you know. I polished you with a special cloth. I poured warm water over you. I... Wait, you poured water on me? <laughs> yeah, but it didn't really do much except make you all shiny. And Hale's adorable. Hey, Emil. Thanks for saving me. I guess you noticed how I look different now. So is Vice a shell? No, Vice, we don't have an answer on. We know he's Grimoire Vice, and we know he's a counterpart to Grimoire Noir, and he basically killed himself to help us kill the Shadow Lord, but that's all we got on him. I'm sorry, Emil. I'm sorry for all of it. Our characters are the shells, it seems. We did find out how Kaine uh, became part Shade, though, well, I mean, through literally 20 minutes of reading. That. I can look at you when we talk, right? Hey, so why don't you tell me something about yourself? Like how th like this arm and her leg were remade when a shade made an agreement with her and is basically residing in her body. I'm not very interesting. Sorry. Bullshit. Come on. I just want to know you better. Please? Fine. This all happened when I was a kid. Before the whole shade possession thing. My body is... different. And when the villagers found out about it, they started treating me like a freak. It is canon, in this version. My grandmother accepted me just as I was. No matter how bad things got, she gave me the strength to keep going. She's really special to you, huh? Yeah. Oh, hey! That gives me an idea. Since we cured your petrification, we should start looking for a way to cure your possession and my body. I know we can do it if we all work together. Heck, it'll probably be super easy. Let me guess, more warm water? Okay, can we just forget I told you about that? <laughs> Those two are great together. That's a new, uh, that's a new loading screen thing. I haven't, or I haven't seen that one before. Sleep well? Sure. And yet your red eyes tell a different tale. Because he went in, uh, be so hard on yourself, he went in right? spite on him. I need to go see Devola and Popola. Very well. Um, I believe the game said that I had something to interact with in my house, um, but I wanted to save first. I believe they said something about like a diary in the house or some some shit. Also, hang on, let me look at something. Yeah, ninety-seven percent complete, huh? And all of these carried over, so I'm, I'm missing a few side quests. What might that be? It's mom's diary. Aha! I've not heard you speak much about your mother. She got the black scrawl and died when I was little. My apologies for bringing it up. It's all right. I can barely remember her face anymore. This is the only thing I have left of her. Reading it helps remind me of when we were still a family. I see. But the final entries get a little... strange. In what way? Well, here. Take a look. Ah! I believe this was a DLC for the first near. Can you not hear me? Why are you standing about like a slack-jawed ninny? Sorry. Felt like I was dreaming or something. Oh, sleeping on one's feet is quite the talent indeed. Come now. There's the door. Right. Let's go. Sorry, uh, in case you're wondering why I'm so excited. The original Nier, I want to say? I'm going to Google this before I fuck it up. I don't remember if it was the original one that had the father near or Gestalt that had father near. I think it was the original.
But either way, um, in one of the two Nears, I forget which one, because the Western release was called Gestalt. And I think that one had brother protagonist in place of father protagonist. But either way, one of them, you were actually the dad of Yona instead of the brother. Um, so we're playing as the father currently for some reason. And it just surprised me and was really cool. We'll be unable to save until this battle is over. Sure, yeah. This is the world of the recycled vessel created to avoid the destruction of all. Um. Okay, well, first of all, it looks like I kept all my old stuff. Second of all, what is this art style? What is happening? Also, this is... This is such a revamped version of the soundtrack. But yeah, and like other ver in other versions of Nier, I forget which one it is, if it's Gestalt or just the original Nier, um, you play as the father in place of the brother. And apparently, this DLC has you playing as the father, regardless of which other version of Nier you're playing. Also, the music is a banger. This change for Western audiences, yeah. But Replicant, which is the like true true to form remake that is supposedly like the version of the game that Yukataro really wanted to make, in some ways chose to make it the brother but simultaneously this is still the father and he very easily could have changed that for the remake if he wanted to also um does this just go down forever or something i also think this is grandma playing in the background but it's like a techno remix and i can't stand it but it, in terms of like how catchy it is I could be wrong on which track it is, though. Also, it just feels more right to be using this big-ass greatsword with a bigger character model, so I swapped. In GL. I don't care about, like, how good or bad it is, it just felt right. Oh, I need to go down here and fight you. Alright, I'll swap back to this thing, though, because this thing slaps on these enemies. Uh, what's with all the bats? Can I just, like, lance them really quick? Yeah, it looks like you can just, like, dark lance the bats and, like, one-hit them. Ew, my face! This area seems to be much more difficult in combat than a lot of the rest of the game. Or at least enemies are beefier. This is interesting. Medicinal herbs, huh? What vices? I mean, vices of floating magical grimoire. I don't know what's so hard to understand about that. 
Ooh, a black scrawl, lost destiny, a white book of false truth. Are we gonna get some answers about stuff? Also, God, this this like visual nonsense is a little jarring. It's gotta be on purpose to look this way, right? Like this can't be like a bug. God, I hope it's not. That'd be that'd be annoying. With the way the music sounds, I feel like it's intentional, you know? Because the music just sounds weird and different. As for why he sounded like he was vice himself, the floating book was uh, breaking down and sounding like a robot. I don't know, that was weird. I'm going to assume it's the classic case of any sufficiently advanced technology is going to seem like magic. And he's just like a, a pr preliminary version of the pods from Automata. But I could be wrong, he could be magical. And that could have just been, like, a weird way to show that he was breaking. Or at least in my opinion, weird way. I also have no idea how long this is, so I might not have wanted to start it, but I started and I'm, I'm way too invested now. The thing is, okay, so since we've seen the end of the game, this makes a little more sense to me now. So the ending, of, I believe it's ending E of Drakengard, is what leads into this game. Um, and that ending literally has the characters from Drakengard, who are, in, in which it is a game with a bunch of magic in it, literally go to modern day Tokyo and fight a dragon in modern day Tokyo. And that could have led to magic basically universe hopping the way that they universe hopped to end up in Tokyo. That is just a minor theory. Like I said, I only know that that happens because of, like, Drakengard spoilers I know. I don't really know how it ties over. I'm sure it has something to do with the game, otherwise it would be so important that that's the ending that starts Replicant. Or, well, near, in general. I will say, the, uh, the filter over the camera is a little annoying because I can't see everything very well. Like, I don't mind it for, like, stylistic reasons. It's just kind of, like, visually jarring. Oh, no, Automata's a sequel. Um... Automata is straight up a sequel to this game. Uh, to put it in perspective how that logically makes sense at all... Um, Automata is set in the year 11,000. 11,000. It has been a hot minute since this game took place. This game's only in the year 3,000. There is 8,000 years before Automata takes place. There is a, there is a, there, there's time. Because this, this game is like a, a little over 1,100 years past the year like 2054 or something. Uh, like I said, I may have made a mistake going into this, though. I don't know how long this is gonna- Oh, man! Soldiers of Salt calling forth White Death. They are a legion who plunged the world into darkness. Oh, we're fighting in the library now, huh? So, because Automata is a direct sequel to the current game that we are playing. Even though that sounds crazy and wild, it is. because these guys have these beefy-ass shields. 
Oh, I still one tap him though. But I mean, it, it, logically, it kind of works with Automata anyways. Even if you don't know how this game goes, Automata still works as a sequel because it's so far in the future. And just flat out a case of, um, you know, shit happened. <laughs> it's simultaneous. No, no, it, it, it is just a sequel. It happens after this game. Devila and Popola are the same characters, by the way. The Devila and Papala from Automata are the same Devila and Papala that you meet in this one. Technically. I, I do say technically. Um, because of a lot of reasons. And Emil from Automata is the Emil from this game. And... Is it, 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 it Automata Emil becomes so much more sad in hindsight. I didn't even know it until, well, you know, I played this game. Because if you don't know about what Emil did in Automata, oh, one handed sword fools embrace. I'm going to hope that, oh, the dragon's corpse brought death to the world, delivering unto. Oh! Oh, that, there's our answer, chat. There's, there's the answer. Um, that is flat out the answer as to how, how, whether or not Vice is magic. He probably is. The dragon corpse is the thing that stays in the near timeline because of that dragon guard ending. So because of that corpse existing, magic is in the world. So it is, it is very possible for Vice to truly be magic. Stop hitting me. I uh, apparently vastly overestimated my fighting abilities versus this place, though. I'm getting my ass beat. I don't know what's with the weird filter, though. I still don't quite get it. I'm not really gonna complain. It's not that intense. It's just kind of weird. It does make it a little hard to see, though. I guess it's supposed to be a diary, right? It is the mother's diary. It would make sense to not be perfect and all that. It is a telling of a tale and all that. I can just play via minimap too, to be fair. I wasn't ready for you. Okay, cannot parry that. Alright, I might still want to use this because it's just faster. My face. Make the time to play Automaton, apparently, this one. I, uh. Honestly, you can probably play them in whichever order. Um, I don't think it would matter that much. Um, because they're. They're related, but they're so separated by, like, actual time in universe that, like, it's not that big a deal. Like I said, it's 8,000 ish years between the two.
say. A as for Automata, I wouldn't buy the Steam version. Um, I'd buy the version through the Xbox store. As someone who played that version, it ran flawlessly the entire time. No problems whatsoever. Uh, the Steam version for Replicant's okay. It, it had some problems for me, but it's it's knocking on wood here. Seems to have kind of worked itself out, so to speak. Like, I haven't run into any real problems with it, other than those weird uh, desync weapon... De desync weapon... desync issues with the... With the controller on occasion. Black sickness stains the future. They journey to return to soulless vessels. Oh, yeah, so they totally can't return. Ow. Is this just like a jumping puzzle section? If so, oh, then I'm just gonna ignore enemies and run. Uh, there's a door, though. I want to see if I can open the door. I'm going to take one second and look up what the fuck this thing is and whether or not I can leave. I'm really confused. Because this is very confusing right now. The wife's diary, the mother's diary... Oh, this is the end of this section. Okay. It's apparently just a bunch of, like, combat sections all in a row with lore dumps as a part of it. And, like, explanations along the way. I want to pop that recovery potion, actually. I'm really weak. Like I said, I, I f this, was suppo this was a DLC for the original Nier, by the way. In case you're wondering about it. As to, like, what the fuck this is and where it came from. And it is... In the original, your wife's diary. In this one, your mother's diary. I don't know if this side door opens, I'm just trying to kill everything so I can test. Doesn't open? Pain. I guess I could probably have just skipped all those enemies then. I fell in sand, I suck! I really hope you don't have to, like, actively kill everything, because I don't think I... Oh, uh, whoops, I suck. I fell in the sand again. I'm bad. That hit him. Cool, nice. I'm just going to assume I need to make it to the end. Oh, whoops, that was a mistake. Go me! I suck. I am... Like I said, I'm just going to assume I just need to make it to the end. And at the end, there might be oh, combat that I need to do. Yeah, okay, there's combat at the end, then. Alright, let's just, let's just use a recovery potion. Let's just use a strength capsule. What's the point of these items if I don't use them right? God, look at that parry damage when you do it right. You have to time it right there. If you hit your parry at the wrong time, it don't work. 
Ah, there we go. Yep. Okay, so it is just get to the end, kill the mini boss. The Kabuki outfit. A thousand experience points. Medicinal herb. X3. Ah, I see. It's a set of like attack of fight your way to the end challenges, I think. I bet you can leave by going backwards. Yep, there we go. That's cool. I like that. I I have no idea what the end is besides it being a cool lore dump, but that's interesting. My word. Something wrong? I feel as if I've just awoken from a most unpleasant dream. I know what you mean. That happens to me whenever I read it. That's interesting, but... Also, how do I... Hang on, let me... Yeah. The world... Is there a... Is there a way to use that outfit the game gave me or something? Okay, good. The second door did 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 save up. I don't remember maybe. Nope. Oh, okay, I got nothing. Yeah, it, it's great that that door exists. Can I leave now? All right. Uh, oh, does that just did that just give me the outfit maybe? Oh, it's apparently, I, I had to look it up because I was confused. Apparently it's the options from the game's title screen. We'll let you change outfits. Uh, let's check that out really quick. Because I got that new outfit. That seems like a really interesting thing that I want to do. I might space it out between doing some of the main story, but I'll finish that before I do the second playthrough, I think. Uh, let's return to the title screen really quick. I did just save. And let's see if I can find out where to change outfits. Options. Wardrobe. Aha. All right, let's just put that on me. Oh, I can make the magic orbs appear like our meals. That's interesting. Let's put the kabuki on adult me. And let's see what that looks like. Let's, like, let's go back in. If I don't like it, I can change it, but I, I, I want to spice it up a little bit. I have the outfit, damn it. That loading screen is now a meal flying, huh? That loading icon. Oh, <laughs> look at that! Oh my goodness, that's incredible! What? I love it! Also, I think that's the weapon I got. The Fool's Embrace, right? Is this the weapon I got from the Labyrinth, or was it something else? Spicy outfit. I like it just because it's different. I like it just because it's different, you know? It's... You details. Sealed away by a cursed dragon. Safe from despair that shackled me. I was free from the fate that cursed me. I was pacified from the indignation that plagued me. I was changed the day I met you. Was it the Ancient Overlord, the new one? Alright, hang on. I'm just going to look this up and cheat really quick. World of Recycled Vessels, just because I, I just want to know which one was the new one. this hard. It's so hard. Okay, Ancient Overlord is not the new one. Okay, it is Fool's Embrace. This is the newest one. Okay, cool. I figured it out. 
Like I said, I just wanted to check because I was like losing it. And I do believe I'm supposed to have 33 total weapons by the end. So let's, let's count them. I believe I have 30 weapons then? What am I missing? Like I said, this is something that like I it, I don't think I'll be able to figure out on my own, so I'm probably just going to look up. In fact, you know what? We'll do it live on stream. Let, let's look this up together, chat. So that we can know together what weapons I don't personally own. Alright. Let's start with one-handed weapons. Nameless Blade, Lily Leaf, Nirvana, Moonrise, Rebirth, Earthsworm, Treachery, Beastbane, Faith, Ancient Overlord, Phoenix Dagger, and Labyrinth's Whisper, Fool's Embrace. Don't think that counts, don't think that counts, don't think that counts, don't because I don't recognize any of those. I mean, they might. Okay, two handed weapons. Axe of Heading, Fang of... So, Kusanagi, Beheading, Fang of the Twins, Vile, Beast Lord, Iron Will, Phoenix, Labyrinths, Fool's Lament. Then another weapon that I don't think counts. Okay, Transient, Spear, Devil Queen, Sunrise, Beast Curse, Holy Spear, Dragoon, Phoenix, Labyrinth Shout, and then the Fool weapon from the Labyrinth. So I think I'm only missing the Labyrinth weapons. I think I collected the rest of it. Go me! I think I got them all. I'm just like glancing through there. Also, I love the outfit. And in fact... I think I can change everyone's outfit at the main menu. This is now turning into an extra long stream because I am too curious for my own good. Wardrobe. So, Kaine and Emil can also have it. I know what the magic orbs things do and it would just confuse me more than anything. Uh, I'm gonna leave town and see what Kaine and uh, Emil look like in the Kabuki outfits. I'm very curious. I must know. I do find it really interesting that Emil is now on my loading screens when usually it was just the sister. Right, let's really quickly just leave the town and see what those two look like in their outfits. Like I said, I like I like the variety more than anything else. Like, it, it, it makes this playthrough now distinct from the other ones. At least to me. <gasps> Look at Emil! Oh my god! <laughs> Emil looking good! Look at him! <laughs> I love it! Oh my goodness. And how, how's Kaine look? Honestly... Not terrible. I th I think it's the hair that's throwing me. I'm so used to Kaine with white hair that it looks so strange to have a different color hair. Emil looks dope. Emil looks dope. Can confirm. We're gonna we're gonna leave him on these outfits. That's gonna be the outfit of this playthrough. That drip. Exactly. You see that? He's got like universes on his shawl. I'm not gonna lie, those are gonna pop up in a cutscene and they're gonna really throw me. Uh, I believe... When I was looking there... It said that there's at least one more outfit. Uh, so I'll use the other outfit for C, I think. This outfit's gonna be going for end ending B. Then I'll change everyone's outfit again when I go for ending C. And then for D, I'll probably go back to default. Something like that, at least. I just wanted to be a little different for the playthrough, just to spice it up, because I know most of the playthrough is the same, even with, even though there's a bunch of extra stuff for Emil and Kaine in there. The majority of the combat and exploration and stuff will be the same. 
But you know what else is the same? Me ending the stream right here. If you're on YouTube, thanks for watching. You're cool. This, these have been some sick episodes. This this one had a lot of reading. Last one, you got to see an ending, though. Ooh, but if you'd watched it on Twitch, you would have got to see it all on the same night. Just saying.